Hey guys, this is the review that Andre and I have been dying to do because yes, we've got our hands on the new Land Cruiser. Isn't that exciting, Andre? Yeah, it's coming back to the United States and this is a first drive off-road. Yeah, so we're gonna take this off-road. We're gonna try out all the gizmos and gadgets. We're gonna see how it compares, at least from our experience to the competition. So we'll talk about the Wrangler, of course. We'll talk about the Bronco. We may even talk about uh, some Toyota competition because give them a little sneak peek of what else is here. Yeah, so we have the Trail Hunter Tacomas here, which is kind of a separate video. We have, of course, basically all the versions of the Land Cruiser. And we could also mention the Forerunner because the Forerunner still exists. Yes. And uh, the new one is coming. All right, well, let's save that for other videos, but let's talk about the Land Cruiser because I think people are super excited because it's come back and it's come back cheaper. Isn't that right, Andre? Yeah, it used to be in the eighty, ninety thousand dollar $90,000 range, but not anymore. No, and this is the first time we've actually had hands-on. So you're going to be going on a first drive with us, so you'll be experiencing experiencing it it's just like we are let me pop the hood let's start in tfl fashion under the hood because this is a very familiar engine isn't it Andre? well yeah it's also in the tacoma and it's already now familiar it's uh, basically a combination of a turbocharged four cylinder and a hybrid system so you see the 2.4 liter turbo and then you see the orange cables which is the high voltage cables here under the hood and this is a very torquey setup yeah i mean um you know there's that saying people buy horsepower but they drive torque and this has a lot of torque how much torque are we talking about 465 pound feet of torque it's like a full-size truck dude it is like a full-size truck uh, and you know people think of hybrids as being fuel efficient this is more for power than it is for fuel efficiency yeah they say 25 mpg on the highway 23 combined so don't expect this to be a prius right now, the old uh, land cruiser uh people might consider the classic land cruiser was of course a v8 it was big it was a big family hauler it had three rows of seating no longer now we are not only cheaper but we've gotten a little bit smaller we've got all of our stuff back here but let me take a seat behind myself and you know what Andre because this is so square um and it even has a sunroof I have plenty of headroom you know not huge amounts of uh leg room because I've got this all the way back but it's relatively comfortable yeah and um I mean Toyota and Lexus have a lot of kind of options for you so if you needed three rows you could also get a Lexus GX right yes. the new one yes if so you want, if you really wanted it or if you wanted the off-roady one you can get the uh you know the off-roady uh Uber trail version uh, Lexus here. as well yeah we, of course at different price points right much different price points I think that starts at seventy four thousand dollars all right and then back here we have you know a lot of room a nice carpeted mat you know for I mean it's a lot of room dude look at that yeah and also the floor is a little bit tall dude so this could be a negative if you are hauling something super super heavy um inside of this i'm seeing anything under here oh there's a little cubby, little cubby. yeah we're discovering this as you guys are so but also uh partial of the i think part of the reason for this is um there's also the battery right yeah. so the battery has to live somewhere so it's underneath the floor in uh kind of the midsection here why are there cup holders here Andrew? well because uh when you're tailgating <laughs> you put your cups there <laughs> well no it could it could also be a three row right it could be a three row yeah i mean in the, in the gx and yeah and overseas i think it's a three row yeah exactly right uh and then uh how about towing do we know towing well the the, the hitch the hitch is kind of um hidden uh <laughs> hidden back here and you know gx surprised us with up to what nine Nine thousand yeah, pounds. Yeah, huge amounts of payload. Yeah, yeah, so this is not quite as much because this is a four-cylinder, not a V6. Well, let's look at your favorite sticker. Ooh, and payload. Um, not super great on this one. It's fully loaded with options, and it's eleven hundred pounds. So not, uh, and also this is the development vehicle, right? So the number may change a little bit so um, in the future. Like, we're like in mid-sized truck range-ish. Yeah somewhere like that our tacoma tier d off-road has 1200 pounds of payload yeah so this is very similar to that well have we kept them waiting long enough so we can take it off road yeah let's let's show it all right i'm putting on my seatbelt, and let's hit the trail so uh what do you think of this interior i mean very upright windscreen yeah lots I, of uh, off-road cues right this is definitely an off-roady uh truck 
I love it, dude. Um, and I have a lot of leg space. I mean, I'm pretty much 6'3". You're a tall dude as well. I got the sunroof and I got a ton of headroom. It's really good. Yeah, and I love the design of it. I, I think kind of the blocky dashboard works a lot, pretty well. Yeah, and then of course we have uh, all of our off-road goodies here. We got a locking center diff, a locking rear diff, uh, a sway bar disconnect, and of course crawl control right there, and then different drive modes. Um, and multi-terrain system. Yeah. I mean, select system. I mean, we've got all the tech uh, for off-roading. And we are in four low already, so we're ready to take on this course now. Um, obviously, Toyota's not going to build a course that this vehicle can't do, so I'm not sure, you know, how hard this will be, but we will. you'll find out together. Uh, Toyota said that they have put up some pretty serious obstacles, so I'm pretty excited to see what kind of uh, terrain we're going to be tackling. Well, over those mountains is the Mexican border. You so we're. There? Is that no. Uh, well, no, that's not the point of this video to cross the border. The point of this video is that we're in the mountains terrain here in S Southern California. Yeah, now let's talk about kind of the heritage of the Land Cruiser, right? Um, the last edition uh, that came out, I believe that was over $100,000. Yeah, there was the Heritage Edition. Exactly. They were saying uh, goodbye to the 200 series, right? Yeah. And I think you and I were pretty much bummed, right? Because oh, super bummed. The Land Cruiser name was going away. They said the new Sequoia was coming, so they were trying to calm us down. Uh, but, I mean, it's now back. Yeah, it's now back. And how much does it start? You know, starting price? Yeah, so about 56000 And so, And if you get the first edition, you're up to seventy, I believe. Yes, um, with all the options, the one we're sitting in here, well, most uh, most most options, it's um, yeah. 60, 68. Okay, it's down here. So MSRP uh, sixty one. This one's sixty seven. You're right, sixty eight thousand. About sixty eight grand. So it does climb up in price. Yep. All right, why don't you jump out and we'll go over the rock garden and let's uh, see what that's like. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but the engine is running, so you're using both the engine and the motor. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about like the off range control, right? Just like, uh, uh. You know, I'm just doing its thing. I'm just not doing any input uh, whatsoever except the steering wheel. Alright, you want to hop in before you go up the hill? No, no, keep going. This is my exercise. I can see part of the front end spoiler, I think, is removed. So it's kind of in this off-roady mode. So you have more approach angle and, and departure angle than street mode, right? So some of my comments are going to be, first of all, it's using the same frame architecture as the other SUVs, body-on-frame SUVs from Toyota. So the Sequoia TNGAF platform, now the new Land Cruiser 250. Same platform, a little bit different size of vehicle. And here comes Roman flexing a little. It's got a good amount of articulation, dude. Yeah, I can feel it. Yeah, it's good. It feels good. I, I, you know what? I should disconnect the sway bar. Let me see if I can do that. Yeah, try that. Right. It should be done um, under pressure. It could be, could disconnect. looking good by the way the tires are not super oh I just heard it all right keep going yeah let's do it so it's got a really sturdy backbone let's see how it flexes now Yeah, it does offer a lot of flex and smooth operation. The spare tire is underneath it. There's a tow point and also the trailer wiring is actually underneath the rear bumper. Uh, I would say it has good articulation, dude. Yeah, it felt really good actually, Andrea. I'm, I'm happily impressed by this. 
Uh, so we didn't mention the fork pack. Of course, it has an eight-speed um, auto automatic. Yeah, um, and the full-time four-wheel drive. Yeah, I'm just looking at some of these numbers while we're uh, waiting for the next obstacle. So 22, 25, 23 EPA uh, estimated, but I'm sure that's going to be very close, right? Uh, what size uh, tires do you think we're rolling on? Uh, it looks like a 31, it and like it's a, a Dunlop. Yeah. So the tires don't look very aggressive, dude. I mean, they're kind of all season ish. So this one, what what makes this unique? It's got the 4600 Land Cruiser Premium Package. So we got a 14 speaker JBL system, digital key capability, power roof, power sunshade, center console, cool box. Oh, we got a cool box, Andre. Like look we used the, to. Look at that, like the old one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can hear it. Right now, we're cooling off our key. Yeah, in case your key overheats. We're <laughs> all set. Uh, it's got a heads up display, uh, lane keep assist. Uh, uh, front cross traffic alert uh, and these wheels by the way are a $1,200 option they're 20 inch alloys I'd rather have 18s uh, for yeah with more tire exactly, right exactly yeah um, but we do have things like all weather floor mats which is nice uh, driver seat memory function all the stuff you'd expect now a lot of people are going to be disappointed because uh, I mean not disappointed but they're going to be expecting the old Land Cruiser right which was kind of the ultimate uh, luxury family cruiser it competed directly with like the Range Rover at the time uh, this is something different yeah, but I mean, the materials still feel pretty good. Maybe not ninety thousand dollar level before. Yeah. But I think I think if you want fancier interior, you could step up to the Lexus. But I actually appreciate the blocky design. And by the way, look, we have heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, uh, all the um, physical controls for the climate control system, wireless charging. This is nice. With this knob, you can control your crawl control, how fast you go. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's really big very one, close at hand yeah the one thing i do not like which is the same problem i have with our taco is little tight look how tiny look how cute that is little volume knob. come on Toto, you can afford what's a part of time Toto's like we want to be able to control uh, the volume with gloves on this good luck um there's a tow haul mode button hidden down there but i don't see a trailer brake controller so i think that's like an aftermarket accent whoa we're okay. almost 30 degrees sideways yeah look at that oh I As I was just talking, we almost we went sideways. Yeah, I got tight, Andre. This thing feels really good off road. Uh, this torquey engine just makes this low range very easy to dole out the right amount of accelerator. Uh, it's good, dude. It's good. It's really good. And the other nice thing I like about it, and if you want, once we get through some more obstacles, we should switch. I'll take the camera and okay. you drive, so I, we get your impressions as well. Um, what I like is, you know, how you can see over the hood, how the windshield is straight up and down. Uh, it just uh, feels like that, you know, Toyota has embraced their off-road heritage uh, and has doubled down on it, which is really sweet. Yeah, and it reminds me, we should talk about some competition briefly, because the straight up windshield or kind of vertical-ish windshield reminds me a little bit of the Bronco and the Wrangler you know, in this kind of yeah. orientation. Yeah, so I mean, you know, the Forerunner has always kind of been an uh, indirect competitor to those two. Uh, so in order to kind of talk about that, we need to put pricing into context, right? So there is a new Forerunner coming and um, by this point we have, would have published the video. Yeah. Toyota has we're, all these crazy embargoes, so we're kind of time traveling. <laughs> so we're going, I mean, you already saw the new Forerunner, but we haven't. Yeah, exactly, it's weird. <laughs> But let, let's say that's kind of the entry level yeah. uh, in terms of price. So it starts at right around, what, $40,000? Uh, well, the current yeah. um, 2024 Forerunner starts at 41 ish Right. The new one, they didn't announce price. Right. But we're assuming it'll be at least that, right? Yeah. Maybe a little bit more. And so that, that will, you know, the TRD Pro will kind of come in where this starts. So it'll be Forerunner. TRD Pro, and then if you want to go more luxurious and you want to switch brands, then Lexus GX. Yeah. And then somewhere in there is the Sequoia. The Sequoia is a larger vehicle that tows more. Yeah. I mean, it's kind more, of a, more of a family haul. Yeah. Even though the Sequoia third row seat is not the biggest in the segment, yeah. it's still kind of that big truck, Tundra, Tundra-like truck. So we got some more obstacles here. We got a little bit of a, a little bit of an a little bit, a little bit minor. Yeah. I love these mirrors, dude, by the way. These kind of squared off mirrors. They're wonderful. Andrew. On the side. Yeah, they're really nice. I like the mirrors as well because it gives me a sense of not just what's next to me, but also height, which is nice. And the cameras are good too, right? We've got side cameras. Pretty good cameras. resolution. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got all kinds of cameras here. I don't know what I did just there. 
Automatic cameras. Oh, I think there is also a mode where you can kind of see underneath the vehicle, like that gives you kind of a see-through view. Oh, through the hood, you mean? Yeah, let me see. That gave us no, that 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 gave us the, the map. That did not give us the see-through. We, we we're off the map. You know, oh, this, this, you screwed it up, Andre. Good job. This connected um, <laughs> Toyota connected system could be better. I mean, it works okay, but it could be have more content, I think. Yeah, you know, um, it's 100% better than the old system, but it's still a little too. There ah, you, go. you figured it out. There. I knew you would. So now we can see through our hood and see what's underneath. The first time I saw that was on a uh, on the uh, Range Rover, uh, a Volk, I believe, actually. It was the first time I, I saw them do that. Uh, so it's not new technology, but it's handy. Uh, it's a little bit of a party trick um but it I guess, a, yeah it'll tell you if there's some you know dead animal underneath you. yeah and <laughs> it's it also over. only works at like super crawl speeds yes. right as soon as you accelerate to what four miles an hour it stopped recording yeah exactly right um how about seat comfort do you like the seats andre yeah i like it uh -huh. uh, like you said we have plenty of head space and also this i don't feel like i'm sitting on the floor right so it's it's a pretty good. I would say it's a good uh, seat comfort. I, I, you know, for me, lumbar is incredibly important that it has that. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. And in general, I love the design. I love these round vents over here. I think those are really cool. They didn't hide them in the screen. You can just turn them on and off. I love the fact that uh, everything is very intuitive. I'm sure if you if we spend more time with this, there'll be things that'll start to annoy me. Uh, and I also love the fact, let me show you this under here, you're going to love this. What, what do you think is under here? Uh, headlight control? Brake controller. Oh, you found it! Yeah, it's right there, yeah. yeah. How, That's sweet! How cool is I that? I love that. Yeah, it's got a brake controller. So this will tow probably, oh, what, oh, oh, 7,000 pounds-ish or a little bit more. Um, so it's competitive against like the Land Rover Discovery. Mm. Um, the Wrangler doesn't tow very much and the Bronco don't tow, don't tow very much either. So you kind of have to balance that out. All right, so I think we're coming up here on the water crossing. Uh, yes, there is a little bit of water crossing. On paper, it says 8.7 inches of ground clearance to the rear pumpkin. Yeah, that's less there, than a Subaru. It's, yeah, but, but you didn't touch anything there. No. So it's, it's okay. I want you to have all the fun, Roman. I know, I've been having too much fun today. <laughs> <laughs> and these, look at these tires, they're not that aggressive no, actually. These, these are Dunlops. Yeah, these are these are not even ATs, are they? No, it looks like all seasons. They look like all seasons, yeah. Now, of course, you can get the Forerunner with these squinty lights, right? Or the round lights. Oh, uh, Land Cruiser Forerunner, I've got too many vehicles. And there it is, there's the one with the round lights. Uh, fifth, what's, what's that edition? It's called the what? 1958. 1958, that's the base model. Sorry, hold on one second. Yeah, okay. Okay, there you go. Right. Well, I wanted to move forward. Yeah. So, um, that's... so it's, it's cool because 1958, Roman, was a very good year. Uh, uh, were you in uh, the middle school back then? <laughs> no. No, no, I'm I sorry. Think, I think my parents were even together in 1958. <laughs> no, what I mean is, it was the first year of Toyota in the United States. Oh, is that why they named it? Uh, yeah, so it's kind of the genesis of when they came over to this country. And and then, of course, the Land Cruiser itself, you know, and how that kind of uh, happened. All right, so. tell, tell me what your first impressions are. This is, now honestly, this is the first time Andre's gotten behind the wheel. Yeah. I'm not fudging this. This is his very initial driving impression. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, the steering wheel feels good. I mean, the, the steering wheel itself. Now, it, the steering itself is really light. I just was able to move it without much effort at all. We're in four low. And it's very smooth, dude. I, I like the, we're in four low. And sometimes in some vehicles in four low, it's hard to modulate the throttle, right? Yeah. And this one is not, it's not the case here.
right, we're basically done, dude. This is kind of the end of the course. We're not done, dude. We're not done. We, if, Where do we go from here? If anything, we are nothing but thorough at TFL. And I, I've got more plans for us. So, first of all, yes. we really didn't touch upon the competition. We just said Wrangler Bronco. Yes. Uh, so, we should talk about, you know, how these actually do compete in the real world out there. So, obviously, the Wrangler and the Bronco are convertibles. Yeah, and this is not. And this is not. Uh, Wrangler and the Bronco, you can take the doors off. Yes, and then, then you also can uh, obviously have a front locker, which this doesn't have. So we're right. missing a locker. So if you're talking about like extreme rock crawling, uh, those probably might be a better choice. Yeah. This is, this is a good kind of halfway point between on-road and off-road. It is. And I mean, I'm assuming that the off the market and some of the accessory companies and even Toyota themselves will offer a lot of choices after the fact for this because I can see this with a slight lift, right? And bigger tires and making it a little bit more macho and and just Oh god, yeah. Available. Yeah, you know, obviously people have customized the uh, but Jesus, before <laughs> out of Land Cruisers and Forerunners, so I'm sure there are aftermarket companies right now that are just wetting their lips at getting parts for this. Uh, but you know, it's not a sawed axle, so it does make it a little bit harder to lift. But yeah, that, that's never yeah. stopped them before. <laughs> but Bronco has a similar orientation; they yes. have an independent front as well. And then the question I'm asking myself is: Will there be a TRD version of the Land Cruiser? Right? Will that be too competitive with the? Forerunner, right? To the Pro Forerunner, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now the Trail Hunter Forerunner as well. That's yeah, coming. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know, but I would I would wager that give it a year or two, and there'll be a more yet more off road worthy, or you know, or a, a Trail Hunter version we'll, of this. We'll show these tires. You, sh you see? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me show. Let me show this other Land Cruiser, and this one is wearing the Toyo Open Country ATs. So that's the tire I would prefer. I love that color, actually. Uh, uh, it's it's kind of a mixture between gold and brown. Uh, some may call it baby puke yellow. I wouldn't go there. Hey, I have nitro yellow Chevy, okay? <laughs> okay. I like I like that color. So I've got a, I've got a, uh, an idea uh, before we wrap this up that, that, you know, we might be able to do. Uh, and look, um, we try to provide you with the most comprehensive reviews possible of these vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, g given the, the restraints of the program, which there are, right? There are some restraints in this program. But behind us is the uh, 1958 edition. Yes. What do you say we swap? Can I go ask him? And take that around. Sure. Andre, look what we got. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Totally different look. 1958, dude. This yes. Is, this is the base trim. We're looking at much less off-road worthy tires, uh, but we're looking at a lower price point. Yeah, Yokohama. So they start at 56-ish, but of course, um, I mean, you could kind of option them up. But look, this really cool cloth interior. Hey, you should drive the course. I drove it last time. Why don't you go and go? go. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so we've got a cloth interior, but it's actually nice. You know, it's not, doesn't feel like you're cost cutting. There's this kind of nice uh, dimpled pattern in here, French stitching up here. And of course the same powertrain, so you're not losing any horsepower. Right. Here you go. Thank you, sir. All right, let's go do this. And this will actually be a better test of the vehicle because now we're really rolling on street tires. Yokohama this time. Yeah. It's oh, interesting. Oh, oh, look, they put the little knob. Oh, it's now in here. Yeah. Kind of like our Tacoma. Oh, look, I, I, I got a manual, <laughs> manual yeah. crank. Yeah. Manual crank seats, yeah. So but there's nothing wrong with that, Roman. No, I love this, actually. You know, I love the bean cans. But the most important thing is you still have a locking rear, a locking center. You don't have the disconnectable sway bar. Uh -huh. Which is, you know, still have crawl control. Still have crawl control. Still have mode select. Start in second. Yeah. Uh, you know, smaller screen, kind of like our Toyota Tacoma. Could you hold this for a sec? So I yeah. put my seatbelt on. So instead of multi-terrain select, you actually have this kind of starting in second gear, which Toyota has done before for many years. Yes, it's nothing. So new. it kind of lowers the torque. So if you're on slippery surface, you know, you're not starting in first gear with maximum torque. And you're starting in second. Look how much more headroom I have when you lose the sunroof. It's ton of space. Yeah, ton of space here. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I, I might be tempted by this guy. I, I don't. Need, Are you thinking uh, about the next long-term vehicle for I CFL? Don't, I don't need all the bells and whistles, but look, you do have 
a heated steering wheel and uh -huh. you do have a heated uh, seat. So, you know, it could be, uh, could, be, could be worse. Oh, there's a traffic jam for some reason. Well, this is the best type of traffic jam, Roman. It's, yeah. it's traffic jam oh, of... It's, it's Moto Man directing traffic. Oh, yeah. We love that. We love Moto Man. Yeah, he's, he's, he's directing traffic. Hello, Moto Man. Yeah, Moto Man. Love you, dude. <laughs> there goes Moto Man. <laughs> Showing off. Uh, oh, there is a traffic jam because um, there's also a... Oh, a trail hunter. A trail hunter up here, yeah. Well, what are you going to do? There's uh, traffic. That's okay. Well, we, got, we need to name this course something that Toyota built specifically for this program. This is for the mountain hunters. <laughs> yeah, let's call it the mountain hunter course. <laughs> you also have a different uh, dash. You want to show them the dash. It's a little bit less uh, uh -huh. uh, digital. digital. Less TFT. So this is very similar to our kind of base Tier the Afro Tacoma, where you have a digital screen in the center. It's about eight inches. And then you have kind of your coolant temp. But there is a difference. What'd and you, the fuel. What would you say this starts at? 56. So ours was 45. Yeah, it's actually a huge difference in price. Yeah, so, so the, the question I'm asking myself, and, and keep in mind, we're time traveling here, so we have yet to actually get hands-on with the new Forerunner. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, at 45, people are saying that our Tacoma TRD off-road was too expensive when we didn't have enough features. Yeah. Now you're up $10,000. So, but here's, maybe maybe you guys can help us, help me. Mm -hmm. I think that people have more price freedom or they they allow for suvs to be pricier than trucks because people think trucks are kind of basic transportation that's supposed to be really really inexpensive um, and they have a little bit more they give a little bit more leeway what do you think for suvs i think we're missing two buttons here andre and i don't know what they are that was a camera 360 oh, camera yes. button They're very good you're and better at this than i am the toehole mode is still here yeah. oh my brake controller is still here oh sweet so i can still tell my six thousand pound trailer okay uh, to answer your question, I didn't mean to not answer it. Uh, I'll go out there and film you. I, I think the people do have more price sensitivity when it comes to trucks, right? Because yeah. trucks have traditionally always been more affordable than cars, uh, and so maybe maybe people will be willing to overlook that this costs you know ten thousand dollars more starting. By the way, can I can I yeah. um, say something? Yeah. Uh, this screen that yeah. says VSC turned off. Yeah. Um, I can cancel it, yeah. but it will always come back with a few seconds. <laughs> Through the rocks. Not super jerky. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. I'm in second. So I have to use a little bit more throttle, so it's a little bit different. And I don't have a front camera. The exhaust note isn't inspiring. It's, uh, you know, it's still a four-cylinder turbo, and it sounds a little, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word flatulent, but you know, it's not, let's just say it's not uh, lust worthy. Boy, we have quite, we have quite the uh, traffic jam here, Andre. Well, it's the best kind. Yeah, that's the Land Cruiser <laughs> traffic jam. You know, we're doing a lot of time to this review, but I think it's worth it. Well, <laughs> it's been gone from the market for two years at least, and it's back. Well, I mean, there are certain iconic nameplates, right? Mustang, Camaro. Corvette. Right, Land Cruiser, Wrangler, right? That people know what they are. Bronco. Bronco. Uh, and so I think this is well worth the time to devote to it. Uh, so you haven't gone through the elephant steps yet, so no. we'll see how you do. And I'm gonna try first gear now. Okay, so give it a first gear. I kind of like that control a little bit more, okay. actually, on, well, the, on this terrain. All right, I'll, I'll go grab you from the outside. Why don't you talk to it this time? Okay. And this model is a little bit more affordable as far as Land Cruiser is concerned, so I do not have a disconnectable front stabilizer bar. So this may not articulate quite as much as the other version of it. Still very smooth. And even on these kind of street tires, it's being very, very smooth. Because when you see drama off-road, that's when, you know, things can get ugly. 
Oh, I see what he was saying. There's a little bit of erosion. A little bit of erosion. So I had to apply a little bit more throttle, Roman. Hey, so uh, this is this is seeing the uh, sausage get made. Yes. So here, can you hold this? Yes. I, I tried to get a thumbnail <laughs> while I was filming. Yes. And what happened? <laughs> well, was it a success? I don't know. So you guys will know where the thumbnail came from. What do you think? Oh yeah. It's kind of in the air. I like that. Yeah. I like maybe a, the other one. Yeah, a little bit better because you can kind of see it a little bit more. Yeah. So that might be the thumbnail for the uh, for the video. Yeah. Yeah. But we may have on some other options, some other choices. We may. All right, All right Roman. I'm gonna go fast now. This is turning into a Baja course. You go fast. <laughs> go fast, Andre. I'm How was gonna, it in first gear? Was it better? I, I like it a little bit more on this terrain. Yeah. I think the second gear is a little bit more for snow. Okay. Right? Because you don't want to like slide around on a kind of a slippery surface. What do you think of the steering wheel? You like that? The controls are pretty intuitive, I think. Yeah. All right. We have cruise control. We have Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. It's their driver assistance tech. But Roman, we don't have a front camera, so I can't... I have a little bit less vision in this than, than the other one. Well, I have a front camera. I just stick it out the window like that. How's that? Can you tell? Can you walk me through it? Oh, well, you're I'm, fine, I'm dude. kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. I mean, we're really articulating here. Look, you're like, in the air, Andre. This is, this is 30 degrees again, right? Yeah. Um, so here's the debate that our people are going to be having. So let's have it right now. Square headlights, round headlights. Ooh, Ooh. You went there. I went there right away, of course. I'm going to go with round. Oh, uh, it's so well. Round more. is classic. Round is off roady. Yeah. Square is like on roady. Yeah. Square is you know you go into a fancy restaurant and uh, yes, exactly. You're taking and, the wife to the opera. Yeah. Round headlamp. Uh, round headlamp is you're going to Moab with a rooftop tent and a case of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Can you swap? Can you buy one Land Cruiser and just keep swapping headlamps? Yeah. So the the, the wine and cheese. Is a, is a square headlight one, right? And yeah. The, and, and the beer and crackers. <laughs> is the round. Yeah, exactly. Too much beeping. Yeah, that's yeah. what the modern Toyotas do. They, they try to help you with beeps and messages. But I don't want to see all these messages. I just want to drive. Just drive, Andre. Just drive. And I'm turning this into a Baja course now. All right, so uh, as we're going you know, through this course a second time, let me... Uh, give you a couple takeaways from this almost hour-long video now that we've been doing, okay? Yeah. First of all, first of all, and I, I think this is something that you guys realize, they wouldn't have built a course, like I said, that this thing couldn't do. Yeah. So, you know, when we get our grubby little hands on it, we're going to take it to Moab. We're going to take it into, well, you better not say, no, we're not, no, no, not to, don't worry, don't tell me to No wiring clouds? No, we're not going to take it into Hell's Revenge. Don't we? Are we? No. Actually, I think Toyota's got uh, enough, uh, Cred. No, cred that they would yeah. let us take it in ironclads and actually do a, you know, a, a more, let's call it challenging off-road review. But from what I'm seeing at the seat of my pants, this is a very comfortable truck. And as I get older, Andre, comfortable is important to me. Like usually when I sit here, I don't like it here because I've got an oh, you know what bar in front of me. My head is bobbing back and forth. Your right? back is hurting. My back is hurting. Yeah. I'm wondering, you know, if you're going to run it off, you know, the cliff. Yeah. But this feels very nice. Yeah. And that's important. That's important. Yeah. And, and yes, yes, of course they cut this course for this program. But still, you know, it's off road. There are undulations and it's doing And there's very loose well. surfaces. And there's here. loose surfaces, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. My head is not bobbing as it might in some other vehicles. Yeah. I also like these thoughtful features. Look, I have a handhold here, Andre. Yeah. I have a handhold up here. Look at that. I have a handhold in front of me, which is my steering hey, look, wheel. Look, you have a handhold there. Yeah, I do. And up there as well. Yeah, really thoughtful touches, which I, which I love. All right, another rock garden. They didn't skimp on the handles. No, they didn't skimp on the handles, which is which is nice. And of course, you know, you're very well aware of what you're driving because it's Land bold, Cruiser and bold in front of you. By the way, this basic one doesn't have any a lot of color. No, it's, it's mostly it's plastic, little, plastic, it's plastic. Little, plastic. It's, it's a little dour in here. All right, let me get out there. Uh, and uh, do you want to talk this time, or do you, should I? You want me to talk? You, 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 you do right, some more right, talking. Right, I will do the commentary as Andre runs it through the rock garden for the first time. All I right. haven't done this yet. Yeah, uh, I like these little. Roman was what driving. What's called? You know, little stacked up rocks. Oh, there's a name for those. And what you're hearing most of the time actually isn't the truck hitting. It's um, the mud flaps hitting and you know we got mud flaps in our Tacoma and I actually like them hey 
Good, we're gonna give Andre a shot to do this. Yeah. All right, any damage yet? No? Of light touches other than that, nothing. Nothing, yeah. That's what we're here for, right? Yeah, I think this thing would look, out, look good in steelies, actually. It would. Look at that. There's something just classic about black and white. Those little uh, driving lights, look at it. You know, give this uh, three months and this look will be all across social media with influencers, first owners, all uh, Thank you. getting no their experiences on, the mud flap on video. Do, but there's not much we can do about that part. So. All right, Andre, I'm going to go across the water. Good luck. Good luck. Here, I'll try to get another shot of you for the thumbnail. Okay. Uh, and uh, try not to splash me. Okay. Not a lot of splashing this time. I'm sorry, did that work? No, because I missed it. Want to see? I'll show you. Here, show you on camera. No, but I, there's not a lot of water. So uh, I, I, I was trying to splash a little bit, but I, it wasn't working. I was too worried about getting my hocus dirty. I know that's horrible to say, but that's the best I got. That's not you good. know the issue with this uh, yeah. Land Cruiser is it's black and white. Yeah. So the camera doesn't love it. It looks like a refrigerator sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's finish this mega Land Cruiser review. Yeah, it's, hey, we may not be first this time, Andre, but we are thorough. We, we've got the. I bet you, I bet you those uh, other YouTubers will not have an hour of review. <laughs> so we may not be the best, but we're the longest. <laughs> well, that's what. Never mind. All right, let's not go there. Uh, so I think. Look, so let's see. Let's talk about our typical TFL Spruce V, right? Yeah. Which hopefully we're covering. So style, we've talked about. Yes. Uh, I think we agreed on round headlamps. Yeah, performance is good. Dude, monstrous power and torque and very smooth too. Yeah, so what I mean by Spruce V, it's an acronym for style, performance. How about ride and handling we talked about? No head bob. No head or bob. Or minimal. Yeah. Minimal head bob. Utility we showed, it's got a lot of room. Yeah, and also large, you know, trunk area and 6,000 pounds of towing. Are you guessing along as to what the V means in Spruce V? Value? Value. Uh, value is a hard one because, like you said, there is a lot of competition, and Toyota themselves have a lot of vehicles. Yeah, I kind of skipped uh, the, I, in this. I kind of skipped ahead. So, S is style, P is performance, R is ride and handling, U utility. Yes. C competition. Yes, we mentioned that. How about E? What is E? E economy. Yeah, we talked about economy. So economy, we did say twenty-five on the highway, which I think is good-ish. Yeah. It's not, you know, gonna. Uh, you know, uh, break a lot of news stories, but it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's it's Thank what you. it's what you'd expect. Uh, uh, and we don't have the hybrid version in our Taco, but we're getting you know 22, 23 miles per gallon, sometimes even more on yeah, the highway. Yeah, it's, it's, we do. It's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, and, and for those of you who are mourning the loss of the uh, V8, I the, would I would well, say welcome to the brave new world of uh, hybrids and turbos. Yeah, and I think the only thing I'm missing maybe is the little rumble, the V8 rumble, but I'm not missing the power yeah. because this has plenty of torque and power. Exactly. It probably has more, I'm thinking. Yeah, more torque. Yeah, even. actually more torque than, than, than the other. Than, than yeah. V8. Yeah, and you know, we'll see what it's like on the highway, but you know, Toyota's not going to screw up the highway right on this, right? No. So I, I foresee a lot of people with a lot of tough decisions to make in the future when they're out there at the Toyota dealership new car shopping, right? And by the way, it comes out like next month. Yeah. Like, or almost yeah. much sooner, you know, really soon after you see this video. I mean, it's, it's, it really is a bounty of riches, Andre. Do you want a truck? Do you want a classic nameplate? You know, do you want a classic car like the Forerunner that's been around? Uh, if you're staying in the Toyota world. Or a pickup truck. Or do you, you want, know. you know, a Wrangler? Do you want a Bronco? Or do you want Nick Miles down there, our buddy? And also Adam Lovelady, he, I, I think he's... <laughs> there goes, I think, I think that's the end. I think that our camera falling is definitely the end. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Adam, I think that's the end of our video. Yeah. Uh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Ciao.